Jason Pierre-Paul back practicing with the Giants this week following his fireworks accident on the 4th of July. For more on JPP downstairs to Laura Oakland. Laura. Hi, Kenny. With the second view is actually the Giants are thrilled to have Jason Pierre-Paul back in the building. But the question is, when will he be out here on the field? Rumors have been that it'll be next week. But the Giants say we're not hiding anything. It's simply too soon to tell. We've seen him in practice one day in pads. We need to see how he responds a full week. We are hopeful if he responds well, Kenny. They will see him in Tampa next week. Thanks, Laura. Tom Coughlin told us yesterday JPP wanted to play today. Jason Pierre-Paul received a standing ovation from his teammates when he returned to the Giants facility. John Payton, former Giants offensive coordinator, Saints at 3-4. and four. Giants 4-3. Four and three. Giants won the toss, elected to defer. So Josh Brown gets things started, and Marcus Murphy lets it go through, so Drew Brees and the Saints will start from their 20-yard line. Saints have won two straight. Highest completion percentage in the history of the National Football League. And that's the challenge when you play against Drew Brees. He has so much knowledge of the game, his history, his experience. Very difficult to fool him. He's seen almost anything that a defense can throw at him. Empty backfield on first and ten from the 20-yard line. And the catch is made out across the 24-yard line by the tight end. Josh Hill and J. Ron Hosley, the Giants' starting corner, remains down. And this is the starting group together for the first time since week two. That should be helpful in the run game for the New Orleans Saints. But where has Brandon Cooks been? It's a great start last year's rookie season before that injury. And can he become a big factor in the pass game for the Saints? Now the Giants already without Prince Amu Kamara missing his third consecutive game. Hosley is starting for him, injured on the first play from scrimmage. Coming in to make the tackle. You can see kind of just gets caught and twisted, maybe even a little bit by his own player there with Jonathan Casillas, and then as he goes down. So Hosley heads to the sidelines. Third year corner out of Virginia Tech. Giants without three starters on defense, Amu Kamara, as well as linebackers John Beeson and JT Thomas. That'll be, uh, that'll be something to keep our eye on here today. You see there's your starters that are out for the New York Giants. Heavy hits on the defensive side of the ball. Hosley replaced by number 31, Trevin Wade. Tyree Robinson takes the toss from Breeze. And Robinson fights his way back to the line of scrimmage. Jonathan Hankins makes the tackle. It will be third down and five. And I think this is what the Giant defense is going to see. I think the Saints are going to run the ball. They want to see if they've got those issues figured out from the Dallas game. Jonathan Casillas, Jasper Brinkley get the start today for John Beeson and JT Thomas. How do they hold up in that run game? Giants send in a fifth defensive back, Tremaine McBride. C.J. Spiller in the backfield for the Saints. Third and five from the 25-yard line. The opening possession for New Orleans. Saints must get to the 30 as Breeze fires downfield. You talked about Brandon Cooks moments ago, Darrell. He was the intended receiver. He is the deep threat in the offense, and they've just missed by inches the last few weeks. Number 10 working at the top against Dominic Rogers, Cromartie right there. He just gets turned loose. Landon Collins is stepping up in coverage to support, and Brandon Cooks runs right by him, and the Saints miss an opportunity for a big play early. So the Saints go three and out. Thomas Morstead will punt to the reigning NFC Special Teams Player of the Week, Dwayne Harris, who will return the kickoff 100 yards for a touchdown against the Cowboys last Sunday. This is Harris from the 26, and he is out to the 39-yard line. 13-yard return, 48-yard punt. Terrific field position for Newman High School's own Eli Manning.
Uh, look at that Iron Man streak by Eli Manning. And, yeah, gosh, you know, you watched that Philadelphia game a couple weeks ago. They come out and they have that great opening drive, kind of follow that up with another one. And then everything has kind of gone south on this passing offense. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens here today. They've had some guys back at practice during the course of the week to work on that timing with Eli and the wide receivers. The Orleans native Odell Beckham Jr., top of your screen. Split wide to the right. Rashad Jennings in the backfield with the fullback, Nikita Whitlock. Manning on first down, fires, and the catch is made in Saints territory by Reuben Randall for a Giants first down. And you can build a little bit off that success that they had in the run game last week, their first 100-yard rushing day of the season for the Giants. The offensive line took a step, but really it's been the passing game here the last two games that struggled a little bit. Odell Beckham Jr. in practice, a majority of the week. Ruben Randall not a full go at practice. We'll see if their timing has improved. Well, certainly look good on the first play as Randall gained 19. From the 41, the handoff to Jennings. And Rashawn Jennings is tackled from behind after a gain of one by Kenny Vaccaro. And this Saints defense really starting to hit their stride the last two weeks. They have really gotten pressure on the quarterback with the guys up front. They're taking the ball away. They're getting their sacks, speed off the edges. Kenny Vaccaro is back healthy like he was in his rookie season. He made the tackle on that last one. I, I think that's one of the biggest differences you see on this defense is the back end and the play of Kenny Vaccaro. Saints without starting linebacker Danelle Ellerby today. Manning on the slant on second and nine. Pass was intended for Randall with Brandon Browder on the coverage. Working from the bottom on the quick slant going in. You see the contact, the tug of the jersey right there. A lot of times that gets called as soon as you grab jersey and tug. That's been a point of emphasis for the last couple of years. Lucky there was no defensive holding called there. And Browder has committed the most penalties in the league over the first seven weeks. No flag on that play. Shane Vereen in the backfield, third down and nine. As Manning throws, it's Beckham. There is a flag this time as Odell Beckham Jr. picks up a first down to the Saints. 28, a gain of 12. This is going to be a fun battle to watch all day today. Odell Beckham Jr. and Delvin Bro. Holding. Defense. Number 32. That penalty's declined. The result of the play is a first down. 32 is Vaccaro, first down for the Giants. Odell's coming all the way from the inside. You see number 13 right there. It looks like that call should be on Delvin Bro, number 40. Kenny Vaccaro dropping down late. Well, a new set of downs, first and 10 from the Saints, 28. As Vereen gets wrapped up in the backfield by the six-time Pro Bowler, a long-time Minnesota Viking, Kevin Williams. They are getting up the field in penetration right now. That, that's a block back. You're trying to pull alignment and block back, and you're asking your center to pull all the way to the outside. Kevin Williams gets up the field and tracks the runner down to make the tackle in the backfield. Loss of four, second down. And 14. Manning on second down, it's Vereen. He's inside the 10 and then finally forced out of bounds by Browder. So Manning hitting Shane Vereen out of the backfield for a gain of 24. And you cannot lose track of Shane Vereen in these situations coming from the backfield. He gets turned loose in the flat. Kenny Vaccaro's there, he turns, runs with the tight end. You don't have anybody on the outside, so a mistake in coverage right there. There's no way that you would have anything designed where you did not account for number 34. Now the Giants have had trouble scoring touchdowns once they get inside the 20. Only nine and 23 possessions. This is Randall. And Ruben Randall takes it inside the two. Knocked out of bounds by Keenan Lewis. That's been a nice mix of play calling by Coach McAdoo here on this opening drive. Has really mixed it up, kind of going right away with some play action, getting everybody involved in the first drive, the first series here for this Giants offense. Giants send in Dallas Reynolds as an extra blocker. There's defensive coordinator Rob Ryan. 
Andre Williams in the backfield, second and goal. And this is Williams. And again, nice play made by Kevin Williams, along with the rookie out of Indiana, Bobby Richardson. Uh, that, that's good work right there, getting that big body stopped down here. Watch the surge by the Saints offensive line to the right side. They're moving that line of scrimmage. Kevin Williams, again, just excellent. His pads are underneath. He's driving Justin Pugh backwards, clogs up that whole running lane. Two tight ends, an extra blocker out of the fullback in as Manning hands it off to Williams, and he is stopped. Again, it is Kevin Williams who makes his third tackle of the series. Yeah, and after that, I'm not running to the left. Uh, after that previous snap, I'm going to go to the right. You've got your fullback on the lead, but it's really Kevin Williams again. He's playing with great pad level. You saw the penetration, and now you've got back-to-back -back plays here. Giants going for it on fourth down. Leave their offense on the field. Fourth and goal from the Saints, too. Moran in the backfield. Manning throws. Touchdown. Odell Beckham Jr. Well, that Giants sent a message right there because they got stoned on on three consecutive plays down there inside and they come back and still go for it on fourth down and this is very well executed because we've seen a lot of these happen this year where you get the offensive pass interference it's going to be that rub it's a nice job by Dwayne Harris not making that contact to draw that flag have that feel to be able to get in between all that traffic and still allow Odell Beckham Jr. to get the clean break inside Newman High School to Newman High School both New Orleans natives and they connect on the game's first touchdown. On fourth down, Manning, the Beckham, 7-0 Giants. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. Halloween weekend in New Orleans. Odell Beckham Jr. returning home. He told you and I before the game he has about 20 friends and family members, at least that he knows of. He cut it off at 20, right. friends and family. He said there's probably lots more here, but he was only responsible for the 20 as that number started to grow. Said he used to love attending Saints games, especially within the division against the Falcons in particular. So Beckham with the game's first touchdown. Now Drew Brees and the Saints offense when we return. His game is sponsored by Bud Light. Make the right call. Drink responsibly. Saints coming into today's game, plus 28 in the first quarter. They had not allowed a first quarter touchdown over the last six games. Saints three and out on their opening possession. Breeze with time. This is Mark Ingram, the son of the former New York Giant. And Ingram has a first down, gain of 17 to the 37. I like the play design there. You've got your vertical routes down the field, and Mark Ingram releases late, and there's absolutely nobody there in the underneath coverage for the Giants. There's Dominique Rogers Cromartie had two interceptions against Dallas last week. J. Ron Hosley back in the game, suffered facial lacerations on the first play from scrimmage. So Hosley is back. DJ Spiller now to the 40-yard line, the ex-Buffalo Bill for a gain of three. And traditionally what we've seen from the Saints in their running game is running back by committee. They were one of the first teams to really embrace this and kind of bring in, you know, two to three real quality backs. You think of the guys that have been here through the year. CJ Spiller now coming in here, maybe adding that element in the passing game. Mark Ingram, you watch him on film this year. He is running very, very physically, very, very similar to Kyrie Robinson, who share reps with all three of those guys. And now we see Spiller split wide to the right. On second and seven, Breeze with loads of time, but then he fires it out of bounds in the direction of Spiller. Good coverage by the Giants' secondary, and they needed it because there was no pressure on Drew Breeze. This offensive line, as we mentioned, together for the first time, the starting five since week two, you can see right there, giving Drew Breeze a nice pocket to throw from, but good coverage from the Giants' secondary. Saints so into the backfield once again. Third down and seven. 
to the tight end, Benjamin Watson, for a 25-yard pass play. Boy, he's really just kind of burst on the scene here as of late, getting vertical up the field. You had safety Craig Dahl walk all the way down in, faking that blitz. Now, Tom Coughlin has thrown the red flag. The question is, was it recognized before the snap? Exactly. The Saints hustled up to the line of scrimmage, got that snap to prevent that challenge. We'll go back here and take a look at the end of the play to see if this was an actual completed catch. Now the officials have gotten together to determine whether the challenge flag was thrown prior to the next Saints snap. Now his hand looks like it stays underneath the entire way. I don't know if it's right there at the very, very end. It might look like it comes loose. But for a while there, the majority of that process, it looked like Ben Watson had his hand underneath the ball was snapped before the New York Giants threw the challenge flag in the second down all right so the Saints did in fact get the next snap off in time let's bring in Mike Pereira Mike your thoughts I think he probably uh, saved himself a timeout on that one because I don't think there would have been enough to reverse it the hand stayed under the ball and so, therefore, to me, the call probably would have stood. Right. Saves the timeout and saves the challenge. So it could potentially benefit the Giants because we certainly thought it might agree that it looked like a good catch. Fleet Flicker. Ingram. Back to Breeze. To the end zone. Willie Steve. Touchdown. That's a nice sequence of plays right there by the Saints. You know, being smart, you've got a potential challenge. You don't know if it was caught or not, but it's a big play. It's going to jumpstart your offense. You hustle the line, get the ball snap, prevent that challenge. Then you come back. Willie Sneed, number 83 in motion, come down, sell the block, sneak through everybody. You've got the flea flicker on. There's 83 trying to sell it. Gets beyond everybody. Now you got your two vertical routes. Landon Collins can't recover in time. Touchdown, Saints. I really like that sequence of plays right there. Just everybody on the same page, being smart, being prepared situationally. Second touchdown of the season for Sneed. Here's the ex-Redskin Kai Forbath connecting on the extra point. Six plays, 80 yards to Willie Sneed. Saints tie the game at seven. Today's Game on Fox is sponsored by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. And by Direct TV. Don't just watch TV, Direct TV. Saints fans celebrate following the touchdown reception by Willie Sneed from Drew Brees. Brees now with a touchdown pass at home in 50 consecutive games, extending his all-time record. Talked about Sean Payton being aggressive last week at Indianapolis with the fake field goal call. He does it again here this week with the flea flicker in the first quarter. There's Dwight Harris. Put the kickoff back 100 yards for a touchdown against the Cowboys last Sunday. Harris out to the 28. Breeze takes the return from Ingram and hits Steed in the end zone. Midway through the first quarter, Kenny Albert, Daryl Johnston, Laura Oakland in New Orleans. Giants drove 10 plays, 60 yards for a touchdown on their opening drive. This is Andre Williams. Now to the 32, gain of four. And it was very efficient. I like the play calling. They did a lot of different things. They kept the Saints off balance. They got a lot of people involved. They've got to get this run game sorted out. You, you've got a commitment to it right now, which you need to do. You may have some struggles early on, but you can't abandon it. So we'll see how Coach McAdoo gets that remedy here in the first half. Manning on second and six. Wrapped up. Down he goes. Ramon Umber. 
Starting for the injured, Danelle Ellerby, his first sack of the season. And this has got to be a breakdown in protection. You're going to get a linebacker clean to the quarterback. So we got a hot, didn't recognize a hot adjust there. If you've got an unblocked rusher, there should have been an adjustment with the routes. So a little mix-up in communication with the Giants. On an attempt sack allowed by the Giants in eight games. Third down and 11. Quick out to Shane Vereen. And Vereen will be stopped. Four yards shy by Delvin Pro. Giants will punt it away. It's amazing the ebb and flow of emotion during the course of the game. The Giants on that opening series just so efficient all the way down the field. And the Saints defense comes out here on the second series gets that sack you know that's that's been a big plus for them here over the last couple of weeks they've been doing a real nice job getting to the quarterback brad wing out of lsu by way of australia what a kick wow and it will stay out of the end zone <laughs> 61 yard punt saints pin deep Spoke with Giants punter Brad Wing before the game, Darrell. He had some tricks up his sleeve today. I tell you what, he can do some unique things with the football. I've been wondering how he does it. He might have a little background in the game of golf. Although with that swing, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> well, he's from Australia. He attended high school here in Louisiana as part of an exchange program, and then it was on to LSU. So a 61-yard punt pinning the Saints back at their four-yard line. Breeze. Looking to throw out of the end zone on first down. And now he fires downfield, and Marcus Colston made an adjustment, makes the catch at midfield. It is a 46-yard pass play for the tight end, Benjamin Watson. What a throw. Yeah, yeah, you, you break contain, you're going down the field. The Giants secondary is in great coverage this whole time. There's really nowhere to go. And even on Ben Watson, at this stage right here, Drew Brees just gives him an opportunity to make a play. I mean, Trevin Wade is right there. He loses track of the ball. He's kind of looking back. That's just great confidence that your guy will go make a play. Now on first down to take him. We'll gain seven to the 43. So the Giants pin the Saints deep, and Brees hits Watson for 46. He had completions earlier of 34 and 25 yards of the third big pass play for Brees here in the first quarter. Oh, it's a great job by the Giants as a team flipping the field. Their offense doesn't get anything, but the punt team gets them knocked down inside the five again. Sean Payton continuing to be aggressive here in the first half with the deep throw coming off his own back end. Good, 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 ready, ready for second. On second and three, this is Kyrie Robinson. And Robinson is close to a first down. And you know the Saints are going to test the middle of this Giants run defense. That's where Dallas did a lot of their damage. Sure, they had a couple of nice runs out there on the edge, but when we talked to defensive coordinator Steve Spagnuolo, his big concern was the success that they had in the middle. He felt that they roughed our guys up a little bit on the inside. Robinson did pick up the first. So a new set of downs for the Saints from the Giants 40. Double, double. Double, double. You ready? Is it? Move it. Prior to the snap. Neutral zone infraction. Defense number 95. The five yard penalty. Still first down. Jonathan Hankins. You know, it used to be that really only the center, could, you know, he'd snap the ball and you'd catch that guy in the neutral zone. Now, you know, the adjacent linemen, you know, even two away, if they feel that they're impacted by that movement, they're going to call it against the defense. Giants defensive coordinator Steve Spagnuolo with the Saints back in 2012. Off the fake to Ingram. Breeze couldn't find it. It went downfield. Hits Ingram for a first down. Mark Ingram to the Giants. 27-yard line as we head to Los Angeles for a game break. Say hello to Kurt Menefee. Kurt. Hello, Kenny Albert. Arizona and Cleveland all knotted up.
Josh McCown, Brian Hartline, 10 yard score. That came three plays after Chris Johnson fumbled at Arizona's own 10. 7 7. Kenny Moose Laura. Thanks, Kurt. Cardinals, first place in the oh. NFC West. Right, 5 and 2. Kill, kill, kill. Okay. First attempt from the Giants, 26. On the slant, taking it. Well, you heard the adjustment, the change by Drew Brees at the line of scrimmage. It's a heavy formation. Looks like it's going to be run to the right. He sees something, and that Giants defense makes the adjustment. He gets Brandon Cooks wide open on a slant from the left side. You got the kill kill right there. You had run right, probably called. Here's your slant to the left. Trevin Wade gets turned inside out on that one. That was too easy. Again, you talk about those injuries at the cornerback position for this Giants defense. They're having a tough time matching up right here in the first half. For Bath, the extra point. And for Drew Brees, his second touchdown pass of the first quarter. The first to Sneed. And now Cooks. And down on the long illustrious career of Drew Brees he has just set yet another career high 162 <laughs> yards passing in the first quarter alone yeah it's, it's fun to watch him I mean all the way from me come here on game day to watch his pregame rituals of getting ready for the game and then when he comes out he's got great chemistry and and he made a he made a great comment earlier this year I think some fans for the Saints got a little bit nervous about the direction of the team after that Philadelphia game he said listen we've got the right type of guys here we're young we're inexperienced we're growing we're gonna get this thing turned around and he saw something with this group that a lot of people didn't see. And you can see the way they've played here the last couple of weeks. They really are starting to build the chemistry with this young wide receiver group. And you got to understand, this is a guy that is missing Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham was such a huge part of this Saints offense. And with him not there in the red zone at critical times, Drew Brees always had that go-to guy. He's trying to develop that rapport now with a very, very young group of wide receivers. You take away Marcus Colston, this is a young group. Well, Brees telling us on Friday, despite the 0-3 start, we knew it would begin to click. He said we have started to find our groove, played a lot better than we were four weeks ago, and it has certainly continued today after the opening possession where the Saints went three and out, back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives. Harris out to the 22. So now Eli Manning and the Giants offense. We'll go back to work. And we talk about those little ebbs and flows of momentum during the course of the game. Here's one right here for the Giants. Can't have a three and out right here. Got to come out. We've got to establish a little bit of rhythm. And it's strange and similar to that Philadelphia game where they just marched right down the field against the Eagles and then really kind of struggled the rest of the game. The opening series here this afternoon, very impressive. They've got to get back into that rhythm that they had for that first series. Well, Lane's Darkwa out of two lane in the backfield for the Giants. Had a career game last Sunday against Dallas as Manning fires and the catch is made by Odell Beckham Jr. out of the 30 for a gain of nine. Uh, this, this is fun to watch with Delvin Bro and Odell Beckham Jr. That, that is some really, really good coverage. Great competition at the point of the catch by Odell Beckham Jr. Delvin Bro, what a story. Like Odell Beckham Jr. attended LSU, but he did not play college football after suffering a broken neck during a high school game. Unbelievable story. The fact that he is out on the field at an NFL stadium today is just such a great journey yeah. for that young man. On second and one, this is Darkwa. And he fights his way out to the 36-yard line. And we've got running back by committee for the Giants as well. Orleans Darkwa had the impressive game against the Cowboys as his running back group went over 100 yards for the first time all season, had the big touchdown run, so he's going to get some more touches here this afternoon. Manning on first down, fires downfield, he's looking for Harris, just out of his reach. And again, missing, missing to the outside in that situation. We, we've seen Eli during the course of the season when he's making these vertical throws down the field. Dwayne Harris at the top of your screen, just a little shake, and then he's gone. And this ball is going to be out to the outside. 
And you want to miss that. You want to miss it inside. As on your release, you want to give it a little bit more room. You want to have a little bit more buffer to the sideline to help yourself make that catch. Second and ten from the 36. On a delayed handoff. It is Darkwa. And Orleans Darkwa is into Saints territory. Picks up a Giants first down, a gain of 17. And as an offensive coordinator for Ben McAdoo to know that he can take a big shot down the field on first down and then on second and ten, have the confidence that he can turn around and hand it off to one of his running backs and not even put yourself at favorable down and distance but actually get the first down, that's a huge plus for him as a play caller. Half minute remaining, first quarter. Off the fake to Darkwood. And incomplete to Ruben Randall. And a flag as Randall was thrown out of bounds after picking up nine. Yeah, we'll see if it's more the, the, kind of that slam to the ground. You're going to kind of try and pick him up Personal and slam foul. him. Defense, number 39. Throwing the player down out of bounds unnecessarily. It's a 15-yard penalty and automatic first down. You know, I mentioned earlier, Brandon Browner, most penalties in the league. So far this season, that is number 12. And it's just not smart. You know, as a defense right now, we talked about the Giants having to come out in this series and gain some momentum back. And, and right now, it, the, the Saints are making it easy for them. You know, poor run defense that allows a big run by Orleans Darqua. And, and right there, adding 15 to the end of the, the completion. First and 10 from the Saints, 23. Todd Wagner down in quarter number one. Off the play fake, Manning to Larry Dunnell, who pulls it in and is marked down at the one. That is a tremendous catch by Larry Dunnell. Giants hustling up here to do the same thing. <laughs> and the quarter has come to an end, so Sean Payton and his staff will have some time to look at it. What a catch by Dunnell. A combined 305 yards of offense. In the first quarter, Saints lead by seven. We start the second quarter in New Orleans. Saints with a 14-7 lead. Giants first and goal from the one-yard line. Up and over the top. And stop just short is Darkwa. Uh, they couldn't get the line of scrimmage moved, so we got a stalemate right here trying to go up and over the top. Last series when they were down here at this point in the field, they tried to go through the defense. Good timing on the jumps. Michael Monti meets the running back right at that highest point, knocks him back. Three wide receivers set. Beckham slot to the right. But now the tight end split wide to the left. Manning on second and goal. He throws! It is nearly intercepted by Browner, and there is a flag. Prior to the pass, holding defense number 39. That penalty is half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down. Browner again. And what you want to do in this situation is, is make him move his feet. He's a big physical corner, so you're trying to do some stutter and goes right there. We saw the one that wasn't called earlier in this game that normally is called as a hold. They get Brandon Browner on that one. Giants now send in an extra blocker, Dallas Reynolds. Two tight ends and the fullback, Nikita Whitlock. First and goal, dark one. It's stopped. Kenny, are they still running it right at Kevin Williams? Are we still running it right at Kevin Williams? That guy was a beast on that opening series when they came down the field. I think they are still going right at Kevin Williams, 93. He doesn't make the play on that one. Actually, nice job by Justin Pugh, but the linebackers filling the hole. Look at them stop Orleans Darkwood right there. You can see all his momentum going forward just shut down immediately. Yeah, terrific play by Joel Lott Dunbar, who was just re-signed this week by the Saints. Second and goal. Manning drops into the shotgun. Manning to the end zone. It's Beckham again for his second touchdown today. 
Well, it was Dwayne Harris on the first one with Odell Beckham Jr. This time it's Ruben Randall. The exact same play. A little rub play. Watch it on the outside. Watch 82. That creates the bubble for the defender to run across. Doesn't make the contact. You see right there. Such a hard spot for that corner to be in. In that situation, if it's run correctly, you see how they have to bubble over the top. That's what creates your separation. You've got to have some inside-out help. Beckham's sixth touchdown of the season, 18th of his career in 20 games. So the Giants come right back, tie the game at 14. Today's game is sponsored by the Ford Transit, built Ford tough, and by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Giants Saints tied at 14, a pair of touchdowns for Odell Beckham Jr. Giants drive nine plays, 79 yards. That's really bailed them out in those situations. The Giants struggling to get anything going in the run game when they're down in that, uh, that, that goal line situation. So Odell Beckham Jr. has been able to get him a couple of touchdowns. Marcus Murphy will take it out. The rookie from Missouri. And Murphy is out to the 20. Well, Odell Beckham Jr. almost as fun to watch during pregame warm-ups as he is during the game. And you wonder how he still has the energy once the game starts to be able to play at the level he plays at. I mean, he's constantly moving the entire pregame. <laughs> Eli needs a couple more weeks before he feels comfortable and has that one down. With him. Must not be a Newman High School thing. <laughs> Now Breeze and the Saints back to work on the wide receiver screen. This is Cooks. And he's run out of bounds by Brinkley after a short gain of one. They're trying to get Brandon Brooks involved in that, that passing game. We saw a couple of times early trying to get him deep down the field. He's got his one touchdown. One of those guys that if you can get the ball to him in space out there on that edge, big things can happen. Cooks matched up with Jaron Hosley, second down at nine. Breeze on the slant. And the catch is made for a first down by Willie Sneed. He's one of my favorite guys to watch on film for the Saints. He does a lot of the dirty work. He'll motion in and be a blocker, going to pick up those safety supports and different things in the run game, works the inside. You know, those areas where you've got a lot of big bodies when you're catching the pass. Just one of those glue guys. You've got to have guys like Willie Sneed on your roster if you're going to have success. And what did Willie Sneed do during the offseason? He worked as a counselor at the Manning Passing Academy. We asked Eli about him. He says, yeah, I hear he's having a pretty good year. Off the fake toss. Breeze throws. And it's pulled in at the 44-yard line by Brandon Coleman out of Rutgers for a game of 14. We've seen good coverage in the Giants secondary. You know, traditionally you're going to have the bootleg. You're going to push this down the field vertically. Kind of a little bit of the double move. Now you snap it off to create that separation. Well-timed. Giants and Saints, Darrell have played 18 minutes. They've picked up a combined 19 first downs. From the 44, this is Ingram. And he gains three. Out to the 47-yard line. And that's the one element that you're going to have to continue to keep your eye on. Mark Ingram did the majority of his damage in the second half of that Indianapolis Colts game. The Saints stayed committed to the running game. They had their big plays later in that game. So if you're getting a little bit of frustration here, you've got to stay with it. Mark Ingram will eventually pop one of these. Empty backfield, second down and seven. Please over the middle. He will take it all the way for the Saints' third touchdown in less than 19 minutes. 53 yards from Drew Brees to Marcus Colston. Well, obviously, a blown coverage. We had all the giant defenders kind of crashing down into that box area, and Marcus Colston carries his route through. He's going to get up and through. And everybody's going to drop him in coverage. 
Colston, the Saints' all-time leading receiver out of Hofstra, out of Long Island. They no longer have a football program, but he has continued to shine here in New Orleans. 686th reception of Marcus Colston's career. Touchdowns on three straight possessions for Drew Brees and the Saints. Well, the Giants, after an 0-2 start, find themselves in first place in the NFC East, involved in a shootout today here in New Orleans. Yeah, and then just got to keep uh, keep chopping wood there in that NFC East. You can see how jumbled up that division has become. And really, when you look at how the teams are playing right now, you know, I know Dallas has got some injuries, and you're going to get some guys back later in the year, but I really think the Giants, you know, since I've seen them after that Buffalo game, have had the, the little the glitch in Philadelphia. But other than that, you know, they're, they're hanging in there. They're finding ways to win football games. There's the former Cowboy, Dwayne Harris, on the return. Dallas and Seattle later today on Fox. Both the Eagles and Redskins have the weekend off. So the Giants with an opportunity to open up some ground on their division rivals. They trail by seven. One of the things that Tom Coughlin shared with us is he asked the players, you know, I want you to, to define what you think some of the characteristics of our team is. And, and this leadership council, about 50 players, they start talking about, about being scrappy, about being gritty. And that, that's what you kind of see from this Giants team over the last couple of weeks. They just find a way, whether it's Dwayne Harris with the big kickoff return, you know, the things that they have to overcome week in, week out. On right, first down, it's Rashad Jennings. Coughlin told us those words Pretty scrappy, mentally tough. That has been the identity in our wins. It really has. And I think it's important if you're going to have a good team, those are characteristics that you have to have because you face adversity multiple times week after week at the NFL level in these games. And if you don't have that mentality, it's going to be hard for you to break through those moments. Second down and eight. Backup split out to the right. He has a pair of touchdowns. Danny, down back at the 22, sacked for the second time today. Now the ball gets out quick. The offensive line is starting to gel here for the Giants, but right now they've run into a pretty good group. Uh, Ole Kikaha over there working the twitch. You've got both your speed guys on that side with Kasim Etabali as well. you got to recognize that, that that's not a lot of brute force, that's not a lot of power. They're going to stun, twist, and use their speed to try and get to the quarterback. Third sack of the season for Etabali. Third down and 11. Giants must get to the 33. Man, hit as he throws, the ball comes loose. And it is recovered by Manning. Back inside the 10. That's a great series for the Saints defense right there. Really starting to hit their stride. Pressure in the quarterback. That just comes out of Eli Manning's hands. And there's a little bit of that grit we're talking about. Now Eli's got to get down in there and battle it out with those big guys to get that football back. Yeah, it was actually his teammate, right tackle Marshall Newhouse, who inadvertently made contact with Manning. Now Wing, who had the 61-yard punt earlier, out of his end zone. Wow. All the way back to the 35, it's Murphy. And he is tackled by Mark Herslick, following a 57-yard punt by Brad Wing. Today's game is sponsored by FanDuel, the leader in one-week fantasy football. There's Giants defensive coordinator Steve Spagnuolo here with the Saints in 2012 when the Orleans allowed a league record 440 yards per game. Saints offense back to work against Spagnuolo's defense. This is Ingram on the toss. There is a flag as Ingram gains four out to the 44-yard line. Holding. Offense. Number 82. 10-yard penalty. Still first down. The tight end, Watson. Yeah, right at the point of attack. Easy call right there. But I would like, you know, right now New Orleans seems to be focused on the edge. They want to get to the edge. See if the Giants have sorted out 
their issues with setting that edge in the run game, I, I still think their, their good matchup is back inside. They've got, they've got good offensive linemen on the interior. I think the run scheme there works better. Breeze completes his 10th straight pass attempt as Kyrie Robinson goes head over heels out across the 35-yard line for a gate of five. The running back by committee again. They're all physical. They can all catch the ball. And sometimes you worry about you tip your hand with your play calling by your personnel, but Sean Payne very confident that uh, he's not giving anything away. Now Ingram split out to the left. Empty backfield, second down at 15. Colston. Marcus Colston to score the last Saints touchdown out to the 44. It will be third down and six. 11 straight completions now for Drew Brees, who set a personal record with 162 yards in the air in the first quarter, and he has a perfect passer rating. I, I tell you, what, it's been impressive to watch both of these guys. And the, the question right now, you know, which defense is going to rise up? Looked like the Saints' defense that last series finally getting some pressure on Eli Manning. Can this Giants' defense do anything to slow the Saints' offense down? Hold down and six. Breeze complete for a first down. Out across midfield. It's Watson again. His third reception today. Flex. Benjamin Watson on the outside a little bit, drag him across, just find that soft spot. <laughs> Colston in motion. From the 48-yard line. 13 straight. Completions for Drew Brees. It's Colston who picks up another Saints first down. Oh, we're just really struggling with some assignments right now. That's just your standard bootleg that's going to come out to the right. You're going to have a deep route, an intermediate route, and a shallow route. And we're losing all of our players down the field. I mean, Drew Brees is going to boot out to his right. And just watch your routes. Here comes your intermediate. That, that's left Marcus Colston's wide open underneath. Everybody's dropping to that intermediate route. From the 37, the play is blown dead. False start. Offense. Number 83. Five-yard penalty. First down. Willie Steed. for a chat with his head coach. First down and 15. Brady steps up to the outside. Taken inside the 35-yard line by Kyrie Robinson. Now you're getting no pressure on the quarterback. Uh, we, we, we aren't real sharp with our coverages in our shallower routes. And you know, Drew Brees will make you pay for that. He's going to be patient. You, you don't have to have something big down the field. He will continue to take what you give him. The pressure that's getting there is getting there very late. He had plenty of time to survey that field before he checked it down to Kyrie Robinson. So that's 14 straight completions. Ryan Tannehill set the new league record last week with 25 in a row. Second down and seven. 15 in a row for Brees. It's Watson. So the Saints now facing a third down and one with five minutes remaining in quarter number two. This Giants defense against Dallas last weekend and gave up a lot of yards, but their defense would rise up and make the big plays when they had to. They're going to have to do something right here to disrupt this rhythm. There's a tremendous amount of confidence with this Saints offense right here. Timeout taken with 4.49 remaining. In the first half here in New Orleans, well, the Kansas City Royals are one win away from their first championship in 30 years. Game five tonight. Royals will send Edison Volquez to the mound against the Mets. Matt Harvey, City Field in Flushing. Game five of the World Series tonight. Following football and the last team to overcome.
a 3-1 deficit in the World Series. The Kansas City Royals back in 1985 when they won their last World Series. It's been a rough goal for Daniel Murphy after a terrific first two rounds of the postseason. Now we had a nice night Friday night sitting at Manning's watching the game. The Mets fans took over Manning's on the patio there. A lot of New Yorkers, Giants fans down for the game, rooting for the Mets on Friday. And the restaurant owned by the Manning family. There's Archie, member of the Saints Ring of Honor, along with our colleague at Fox, son Cooper. Wait, he's not filming a segment? What's he doing? He's just hanging out today. He's not working? Well, it's, it's the Manning hour minus 58 minutes, right? It only takes it only takes a few minutes to get his work done. You know, we asked Eli about some of his Saints memories. His dad was doing radio for the Saints when Eli was a youngster, and he said, we used to come to all the games. We'd get here early, run around the dome. Peyton and Cooper were allowed to bring friends. I wasn't. That's, you know, it's, it's the, the price you pay is that youngest, youngest in the family. A look at uh, some of the work Cooper has done at Fox this season. And a lot of people don't know this, Odell, but you and I went to the same high school in New Orleans. What's it like to, uh, to be this close to me? I mean, not exactly what I pictured, but... Well, maybe this is more comfortable. Oh. The batting hour, minus 58 minutes. As the Saints keep it on the ground and pick up a first down inside the 25-yard line. It is Ingram. And by the way, Odell Beckham Jr. and Cooper Manning, the only 1,000-yard receiving seasons in the history of Newman High School. Cooper Manning, Odell Beckham Jr. Good company. Beckham with both giant touchdowns today. Saints have scored touchdowns on their last three possessions. Looking to add to their lead. And a nice tackle is made on... Kyrie Robinson by Devon Kennard as we head for a game break with Mike Hill. Mike. All right, guys, Steelers and the Bengals. You know, the Steelers just got Big Ben back. Can't afford another injury, and this one would be huge. Le'Veon Bell going down, clutching his right knee. Had to be carved off. Could be a big blow for Steelers Nation. Kenny, moves back to you. All right, thanks very much, Mike. Second down. And 11. Happy backfield for the Saints. Breeze throws on second down, and the catch is made by Colston, who spins to the 12-yard line for another New Orleans first down. Uh, there, there's a couple of different ways to attack this defense when they're kind of struggling with their linebackers. You know, you're going to run the football, but right now, Drew Brees is spreading everything out and, and getting after them with the short passing game. And we've seen several assignment breakdowns, and then just a good feel right there by Marcus Colston. He drifts to the outside just past the outstretched arms of Devon Kennard. Best play of the drive. On the 13-yard line. All the way down to the three. I tell you, right now, the, the other thing that's really well done in this game is Drew Brees and his ball fake. C.J. Spiller's in there now. You're thinking pass, and you get a little draw inside, but he continues to hold that fake to come back and fake play action. And that, that confuses your defense. They haven't made that transition from pass rush to run tracking at that point. Nine yards for Spiller. Second down and one. First trip into the red zone for the Saints. Their three touchdowns came from outside the 20. On second down, it's Robinson, and he picks up a first. As we head towards the two-minute warning, here in New Orleans with the Saints leading the Giants 21-14, and Robinson remains down. Well, even though this is running back by committee, uh, they, they function very, very well together as a group. Kyrie Robinson, very physical, like Mark Ingram in his running style. He gets a lot of these carries down here close to the goal line. I don't know if his ankle got trapped and rolled up on down there at the bottom of that pile. So the Saints medical staff continues to tend to Robinson. 
Members of the Saints offense surrounding the injured running back Kyrie Robinson who scored two touchdowns in last week's game against the Colts injured on the previous play. Yeah, it's a significant lower leg injury. And right now, what, what we learned down here while we've been here this weekend with the Saints is there's a different vibe in this locker room. Um, th these guys are tight. They're close. Uh, Sean Payton talked about it a lot of this team coming together. And you can see a great example of that right there. The, the emotion on some of these Saints players' faces, knowing that they've lost Kyrie Robinson for the season. You see Zach Streif right there. Drew Brees earlier. Uh, there is something different. You know, you hear it and sometimes, you know, you wonder if it's true or you're trying to put a positive spin on some momentum you've created. I, I think it's legitimate here with the New Orleans Saints, and I think this is a great example. I mean, these guys have built some bonds. They're tight, and you have to have that. I mean, for them to be able to, to turn this season around, you know, from that start and get to this point right here and playing the way they're playing here this afternoon, uh, a lot of that has to do with the bonds, the respect, uh, the feelings that they have for each other beyond being a teammate. All right, time for another game break to Los Angeles. We go. Mike Hill. Mike. All right, guys, Niners and Rams, and who's your rookie of the year? Is it Amari Cooper? Maybe it's this guy, Todd Gurley. 71-yard touchdown, untouched. Fourth rushing touchdown of the fourth rushing attempt at least 45 yards this season, most in the NFL. 10-3 Rams in the second. All right, thanks, Mike. We're in St. Louis opening week of the season. Gurley was not yet back from injury, but he has made a huge impact for the Rams. Well, he'll take a lot off of Nick Foles' plate, and, uh, you know, that, that that's only going to help that St. Louis Rams team. As the medical staff continues to tend to Kyrie Robinson, we head downstairs to Laura. And I wanted to continue the conversation Daryl was having. It's one of the things Drew was so happy to talk about why this team is so different because he said we're finding our identity. We're young, but we're not have, having to worry about our character. He said Sean Payton was true to his word this offseason, telling him after a rough season last year, we're going for two things, character and toughness, even if that means character over talent. Kenny. Thanks, Laura. And you see the reaction from not only the Saints players, but the Giants defense as well. Yeah, you work hard all year round to be a professional football player, and it can be taken away. Your season can be taken away in, in one play right there. So they know how fragile this is, and you hate to see it as a player. You hate to see it as a fan, anybody. Uh, this stadium, uh, it's, it's a great testament to who Kyrie Robinson is in this town. You know, he's obviously set an example and become a fan favorite, and uh, our best to him as he starts his process of getting back to the field. Standing ovation from the Saints fans for Kyrie Robinson as he heads back to the medical room. And now the clock winds down, and we hit the two-minute warning. First and goal from the two when we come back. Back into New Orleans, first and goal from the two as Ingram gets bottled up. Trevin Wade along with Colin Jenkins. Yeah, there's a nice job making a play right here in this run game. Colin Jenkins beats to the inside. Then you got help coming from the outside from Trevin Wade. They needed something positive. This defense has been on their heels the entire first half. Be a big, uh, big boost of confidence for them right here to hold the Saints to a field goal attempt here at the end of the first half. Get apps, videos, and more at iTunes.com slash NFL. Second and goal for the Saints from the four-yard line. Ingram fights his way down to the two. Both of these offenses have moved the football effectively, you know, from 20 to 20. Even I mean, really, you could probably go from 5 to 5. But, boy, the defenses have really kind of hunkered down here when they've gotten inside the 5-yard line. This line, is the, it's the Giants trying to make a stand here. 176 yards of offense for the Saints in the first quarter. Three touchdown passes for Breeze. Two TD receptions for Beckham. Giants use their second timeout. 
Saints facing a third and goal from the two. Saints shuffle in personnel. Ingram in the backfield. Third and goal. Speed in motion. Off the fake to Ingram. Brings to the end zone. Touchdown. Second of the game for Willie Steed. A uh, good presence by Drew Brees on this play because he wants to go to Josh Hill out the flat. It is covered well by the Giants. He plants and he knows that Willie Steed is going to be breaking across back to the other direction. He's going to come into your screen down here on the motion. But we want to go out to the flat. We want to get it out to the flat to Josh Hill, 89. Covered well. And Willie Steed is able to navigate his navigate his way through across the secondary for the touchdown. For Beth. For the extra point. 28-14 Saints. As Breeze hits Steed in the end zone for the second time today. You come across a formation in motion, but then you got to find your way across all those big bodies. Drew Brees does a nice job extending that play a little bit to give it to time to develop. That was a long developing play to be able to get back to Willie Sneed. Well, who is Willie Sneed? Played at Ball State. First team all back. Time with the Cleveland Browns. Spent some time on the Carolina Panthers practice squad. And then it was on to New Orleans. And he's just one of those guys that you have to have. And, and Sean Payton said, you know, we went into camp this year, and, and within two weeks, you kind of looked at Willie Sneed, and you're like, all right, we, we've got to find a roster spot for number 83 on this team. And he jumped out that much. And he does a little bit of everything. You know, at that time it was, you know, special teams. But you watch him in the run game when they do the motions across. You know, a lot of these wide receivers don't want to get in there and, and block that backside cutoff on a tight end or a safety as he drops down. He does a nice job. He's got a good feel for it. And then his yards after catch uh, has been very impressive as well. His father, Willie the Third, played at the University of Florida, was a New York Jets draft pick back in 1989. And also spent some time with the Houston Oilers. Two touchdowns for Sneed against the New York Giants today as Eli Manning and the Giants offense heads back onto the field with a minute 46 remaining in the second quarter. Giants have one timeout. Manning with a couple of TD throws to Beckham. They used a couple of their timeouts there to preserve some time here in this two-minute situation. We'll see if they can take advantage of this. They've got one left to work with. Giants start from their 20-yard line, trailing by 14. And it complete to Fareed. And he's shoved out of bounds after a gain of seven. Two touchdowns, two punts. Now remember the Giants won the toss. They deferred, so they will get the ball first following halftime. Second down and three. Kareem picks up a first down out to the 34. A lot of times you get into these two-minute situations. It's about getting that first first down. Now where they kind of, you step in, you fall into that rhythm now. Well, you'll see the change in play calling here for the Giants. And his pass intended for Harris. And Jarris Bird nearly makes a diving interception after the deflection. And Dwayne Harris is still down right now. And that would be another big loss for this giant team. Trying to reach back to make the play. Damian Swan got a piece of it. And then Bird comes flying in. Second and ten. A minute 19 remaining in the half. Over the middle, it's Fareed. Out to the 39-yard line. Stephen Anthony, first-round pick out of Clemson, makes the tackle. 
third down and five. And Maddox pass is caught, and there is a flag. Nice catch made by Will Ty. Brown are defending. Prior to the pass, holding defense number 39. It's a five-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Uh, with the uh, injury to Larry Donnell, now we're down to Will Ty is our only tight end. So he's going to come off your traditional spot. There's number 39 in the coverage. He's running an out route. He's got his hand time. You can see the jersey. It's a point of emphasis. You can't do it. You can't grab jersey. The message is being sent. Brandon Brown is going to get up. He's going to be frustrated, but there's no reason to be. If you're going to grab jersey and show the stretch, you're going to get flagged. Now the ball came loose, but the penalty, third time Browner has been flagged today, gives the Giants an automatic first down. From the 44, under a minute remaining, they have one timeout as Beckham attempts to make the one-handed catch, but could not with Rowe defending, and there is another flag as Banning is held Personal back up. foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 44, hitting the quarterback low. It's a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Paoli Kikaha on the pressure. Another one of your speed guys coming off the edge. And you cannot be down low. You are responsible for your body position. You can see he's down very low, below the knee on Eli Manning. Even though he's engaged with the blocker, it is his responsibility not to be anywhere near that quarterback down low. So penalties hurting the Saints during this Giants drive. 50 seconds remaining. From the New Orleans, 41. Batting with time on the slant, it's Beckham. They look to put a move on Bro, who takes him out of bounds. So the clock stops at the 33-yard line as we check in with Laura. Well, we'll check back in with Laura. Giants now with a second and two without Larry Donnell. Donnell suffered a neck injury earlier. As Manning swings it out to Vereen, and Shane Vereen has a Giants first down. So the Giants taking advantage of a couple of Saints penalties. There's Dwayne Harris. They lost Donnell earlier. Yeah, and his foot got caught in the turf, wiggled a little bit on that earlier play in this series where the ball was almost intercepted. First and ten from the 30-yard line of the Saints. Manning fires to the outside, and it's Miles White who makes the catch for a gain of eight. Back downstairs to Laura. Thanks, Kenny. I wanted to give you an injury update. You talked about Donnell. He was carted off the field with a neck injury. His return is questionable. All right, thanks, Laura. So, Will Ty remains in at tight end, number 45. Miles White, number 19, in at wide receiver for the injured Dwayne Harris. Second down and two. On the slant, it's Ruben Randall. And he spins inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Yeah, and this team showing that grit, that scrappy style of play that they've been demonstrating here the last few weeks. Giants use about 15 seconds prior to the snap. They have one timeout. As Manning throws to the near sideline, it is tied. And he comes down with it at the 2-yard line of the clock. Down to seven seconds. There's your guy. The last tight end left. Look at Will Ty getting up there, making the catch. Getting the feet down. That's well done working the sideline. And now Sean Payton running down the sidelines will call a timeout. With seven seconds remaining. What's coming up on the Visa Halftime Report, Kurt? Coming up on the Visa Halftime, Big Ben makes his return against the undefeated Bengals. The Lions look lousy in London, and Keenan Allen looks to provide a bolt of energy to the Chargers offense. We'll see you at the half. All right, thanks, Kurt. We look forward to it. So the Giants use some time with a timeout in their pocket. The completion to Will Ty down to the two-yard line, seven seconds remaining. Remember, Eli Manning already has two short touchdown passes, one of two yards, and the other from one yard out to Beckham. 
He saw a lot of conversation there between Sean Payton and Rob Ryan. It definitely something not right because they had to call that timeout to get their defense regrouped. There's that combination up here at the top. We've seen that formation twice down here work in this situation. From the two, Manning looking at Enzo. He throws and he finds his man for a touchdown. Shane Vereen. I tell you, that's an impressive drive by this Giants offense. Good job by Tom Coughlin getting those timeouts to preserve some clock. We're just going to slide you out into the flat. Nice little stick move on Stephen Anthony to get the separation. That's a, a seasoned vet that's used to running those types of routes, working against a rookie in that situation for the touchdown. Giants drive 80 yards in under two minutes. A minute 44 seconds. And as we mentioned, they will get the ball back to start the second half. Yeah, what was We've seen a couple of instances of really good management by the coaches. We saw the Saints with Sean Payton and his staff, you know, hustle up, get that snap before the challenge could come out. Probably was going to stay anyways, and then after all that confusion, the first play out of that is a flea flicker for the touchdown. So a really nice sequence there by the Saints early on. And then right there, I mean, the, the Saints have just been up and down this field all afternoon long. The Giants' defense can't stop them. You know, you get those timeouts used. You put one in your pocket for your offense just in case they need it. You get the opportunity, Eli Manning takes his team all the way down the field, gets the touchdown, and <laughs> never had to use the timeout that they had. I'm always impressed by the poison composure of the quarterbacks at the NFL level in those situations because I'm like, call the timeout, call the timeout, what are you doing? When we spoke to Tom Coughlin about Eli Manning yesterday, he said, beginning with the Buffalo game, when we were there, he said, the way Eli has been running the game, directing traffic, changing tempo, changing protections, it's been terrific, he said, a lot of the things that Eli does does not show up in the box score. Absolutely, and that's the conversation right there with, with Coach Ben McAdoo, getting used to this system. This is only year two. He says he's much more comfortable in it, but just as an example last week in that Dallas game, you know, to have your first 100-yard per rushing performance as a team, a lot of that was because Eli Manning was audible to runs instead of short passes. He wanted his offense to get their feet underneath him a little bit. All right, ready for some numbers? 507 yeah, yards. These numbers? 507 yards of offense wow. in the first half. 32 first downs, 49 points. Drew Brees throws for 300 yards in the first half. Saints with a 28-21 lead. Giants will receive the second half kickoff. Wild first half in New Orleans. Time for the Pisa Halftime Report. Kurt, take it away. We start the second half here in New Orleans. Saints lead by seven. Today's excitement brought to you by Nissan. Both teams started the season slow, but have come out over the last month. Drew Brees, four touchdown passes in the first half. Two of the four to Willie Steen. Today's excitement brought to you by Nissan. We told you about some of the numbers before we headed west for the Visa halftime report. Over 500 yards of offense, 32 first downs. The one critical thing you could say about the Saints with those great numbers right there is their penalty situation. Four penalties resulting in first downs for the New York Giants. None bigger than that third down penalty that kept the drive alive right at the end of the half to get seven more. Without the injury, Dwayne Harris and Shane Farini on the return for the Giants and he takes it all the way out to the 34 yard line. So Good field position for Eli Manning and the Giants offense. So, last team with the football wins. It looks like one of those situations right here. And you made a great point. As we went into halftime, the Giants deferred to start. So they've got it again right now to come back and tie this game up. One of the defenses has got to make a stand right here. Uh, we saw three sacks on those halftime stats for the Saints. They were getting a little bit of pressure at the end of that first half. But then Eli took them right down the field in that two-minute situation. I, I don't know what the Giants are going to do defensively. We've got guys from the Saints just running free in their secondary. Wayne Harris now back in the game. Was not out for the second half kickoff. Harris slot to the left. First and ten from the 35-yard line on the toss. It's Rashad Jennings. And Jennings gains five out to the 40 on first down. Anthony the tackle. 
Come out and establish that run, that opening series by the Giants to start this game. They kept the Saints off balance. I wouldn't change anything. You know, you talk about adjustments you make through the first half, things you look at at halftime. You wonder if both of these offenses had a real quiet time at halftime. Hey, let's just keep doing what we're doing. They haven't stopped us yet. Giants lost tight end Larry Dinell in the first half. He has not returned. Second down and five. It's Harris for a Giants first down. As we head down to the field, Laura Oakman, Laura. Kenny, I'm going to use this halftime simply to update you on all the injuries. Dwayne Harris questionable with a sprained knee and a sprained ankle. Larry Donnell, as you said, still out with that neck injury. Kyrie Robinson, that's the big one. I do not have official word. I can just tell you just around down here on the field. That's all anyone's talking about. What a gruesome injury it was. He's been taken to the hospital is what I've heard. I will have an update as soon as I get it. All right, thanks very much, Laura. And, of course, Blaine Harris has returned for the Giants. Brought to the right. First and 10, 48-yard line. It's Jennings. Takes it out across midfield into Saints territory for a game of two. And what did Tom Coughlin tell us about Dwayne Harris? He's an everyday guy. He just comes to work every day, has a good time, continues to work. You can tell he's not 100% out there. You heard Laura say he's questionable with an ankle and a knee. Well, he's back out there right away to start this second half. He's an absolute warrior. Harris now slot to the left. Second down and eight. Play action. Manning rolling right. And now he fires downfield. He's looking for Beckham, who makes the catch for his third touchdown in his return home to New Orleans. Fifty yards from Manning to Beckham. Why? Wow, they've got everything covered, and you have two guys on Odell Beckham in this situation. He's coming from the opposite side. Dwayne Harris, 17 on the inside route, trying to work that intermediate area. Odell Beckham gets on top of Delvin Bro. Safety help. Doesn't recognize it. Jarris Bird plays it poorly in the air. And it's another touchdown. Beckham played here at the Dome once previously. The 2012 BCS Championship game. Alabama over LSU. 21-0. Different story today as Beckham has reached the end zone. For the third time, we are tied at 28. Today's game was sponsored by Southwest. Transparency. Low fares, nothing to hide. By Burger King. Introducing new Buffalo chicken fries. A better way to Buffalo. By Chevrolet. Find new roads. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Friday night here in New Orleans, Newman High School with a 52-9 victory over Wright. Rod alum, Eli Manning with four touchdown passes today, three to fellow Newman High School alum, Odell Beckham Jr. Doing something right at Newman. So the Giants erase a 14-point deficit. They score 14 points in two minutes, four seconds to tie the game. It, 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 you talk about opportunities, but you got to cash in on those. And at, at 28 14, under two minutes to go in that first half, the Giants put together that really impressive drive, knowing that they're going to get the ball to start here in the second half. And I, 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 you know, we talked about the run game being something to watch today. You know what? I'm, I'm not even going to run the football. I'm just going to start throwing it because nobody can cover anybody this afternoon. So now the Saints go to work from their 20 yard line in a tie game as Breeze swings it out. This is Ingram, and he picks up a first down, and that's 18 straight completions for Drew Brees, one shy of his own franchise record. It's been impressive. I mean, you, you watch the tape getting ready for this game, and you've got to look at what Dallas did in that run game. Last time out, the Giants give up 233. You're thinking about that. They definitely saw something here they like in their matchup. You look at the linebackers with the injuries there. You look at the secondary with injuries at corner. And they have decided that the passing game gives them the best opportunity. Off the play fake, Breeze spikes the ball, so that will end his streak. One shy of his franchise record. Seven shy of the league mark. After 18 in a row. And trying to get that screen pass. Marcus Kuhn recognizes it. Tough, 
for Mark Ingram to get out of there. He kind of got caught in the middle. It's one of the risks you run when you do a screen pass. You step up inside. Sometimes you get clogged up with all those big rushers. Green starts a new streak as Colston breaks free for some extra yardage. How good have they been through their careers together down here as Saints, Drew Brees, and Marcus Colston. Just so consistent. And sometimes you have such chemistry and such rapport with somebody that they, they, they become virtually uncoverable because there's just that timing element. They've done it so many different times together under so many different situations. Colston with his 69th career touchdown reception from Brees earlier. That's the most ever for a guy who's only caught touchdowns from one quarterback. Breeze over the middle for another first down into Giants territory. It's Benjamin Watson to the New York 41. 17 yards. Hey, get your play action. Get the attention of your linebackers because they're going to have to step up to honor it. Now you got to drop back and find your zone read. And there's Ben Watson sliding right in between Jonathan Casillas and Jasper Brinkley. Looking to throw the corner is Ingram, but he runs right into the arms of Robert Ayers. One more note on Breeze, passing for 300, Darrell, in the first half. First to do that since Aaron Rodgers last November against Chicago. Now the big thing with both of those guys, they just, they're, they're, so, they're so difficult to defend at the quarterback spot in the NFL. They can do so many different things. Movement prior to the second and ten play. Yeah, they're gonna, start. they're gonna call this one on the Saints. False start. Offense number 64. The defense did not get in the neutral zone. Still right tackle, out. Zach Street. And this is another area where you have to have a little bit of consistency. Watch Zach Street. So you're gonna have the jump in there. And now he points, and he wasn't all the way, and he did influence you to the point where you had to snap it. And that's another area. You know, it's kind of that. You know, the catch of the ball, did you become a runner? That one now is, is given the officials. We're seeing it called differently from week to week, whether they go neutral zone infraction or false start. Second down and 15. Reeves fires, and it is nearly picked off by Wadilunga. And there is a flag. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 98. It's a 15 yard penalty, an automatic first down. Well, Demontre Moore, who was a healthy scratch last week because of some penalty situations, is right back at it again this week. Right. So that will not make Tom Coughlin happy. Absolutely following not. Following his roughing the passer on Sam Bradford in the game against Philadelphia, he was fine. Moore asked about it. He said it's due to my poor football IQ. Well, he hasn't stepped up his IQ any on that one. Across the Giants, 15 yards, and now it is Ingram. Ingram running hard. Has another Saints first down to the Giants, 20. He really does. He runs very hard, great pad level. He's really patient when he gets into the middle. He's got a nice jump cut. I've watched him on film. He looks like a completely different runner this season than I've seen in the past. He's very physical. That, that's a big hit by Brandon Merriweather right there. He's got the advantage. He had the, his pads underneath, and you can see Mark Ingram bounce off of that tackle and gain two, three more yards. Now Spiller in for Ingram. Brees on first and 10 from the 21. And that pass just out of the reach of Michael ho oh, Matawanui. Is that what it says on that piece of white tape on top of the monitor? Oh, come on. Phonetically? <laughs> now you're sharing our secrets. Uh, you know how to say that one. You've said it before. Coming off the wing right here, just running that wheel route, trying to get out to the flat and then get vertical. To answer your question, yes, it's exactly yeah. what it says. <laughs> how about the definition? Yeah, very uh, very conflicting. Yes. Does it make sense? Ho'o Manawanui in Hawaiian means to be patient. And we are whenever we say his name. I think the throw makes that catch that much more easier in that situation. It's tight coverage. Drew Brees puts it 
in a spot. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable coming out of the slot right here. And watch the two defenders that are in coverage. I mean, even Brandon Merriweather is able to, or actually, J. Ron Hosley is actually can drop off his coverage and add another defender, but it doesn't matter. Drew Brees drops it right over the top. Second touchdown reception for Cooks. It's the fifth touchdown pass for Brees. And we are not yet five minutes into the third quarter. Nice job. Forbath the extra point. Saints back on top. 35-28 here in New Orleans. A look at the NFC South standings. Carolina at 6-0. Atlanta Falcons 6-1. And, and the Saints looking to even their record at 500. And how about the Tampa Bay Bucks? They lead the Falcons today 20-3 in the third quarter. And that's an impressive bounce back from last week when they let a 24-0 lead slip away from them at Washington. Here's Shane Vereen on the return, although Dwayne Harris returned earlier on offense. No Harris. On special teams, and Vereen takes it out across the 40-yard line. Big return, setting up terrific field position for Eli Manning and the Giants offense. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Cialis. Two quarterbacks who have combined to win three Super Bowl Most Viable Player awards. This is tremendous. Both Manning and Breeze with more touchdown passes than incompletions today. I don't know if you took a carded seven-on-seven -seven session in practice and you'd have those type of results. Andre Williams on first down. And Eli Manning, Darrell, with his four touchdown passes, has surpassed Joe Montana, now in 11th place all time, 274. Montana with 273. <laughs> Second down at five. Manning, grab from behind, there is a flag, and the catch is made downfield by Will Ty at the New Orleans 21-yard line. Holding, offense, number 76, the 10-yard penalty, replay, second down. So the 32-yard completion is erased. The rookie left tackle, Eric Flowers, the guilty giant. Yeah, working against Haole Kikaha, and it's that speed on the outside. Right, so look at the look at Eli Manning here. Look at the strength and the ability to be able to step up, rotate, and get enough on this throw down the middle of the field. That's impressive. Maybe not a great decision, right? That's Darius Bird. He missed the last three games with a knee injury. Bird heads off. Giants without tight end Larry Donnell. Ruled out for the rest of the game with a neck injury. Wayne Harris, we saw him return earlier. Knee and ankle issues. Orleans Darkwood, his return is questionable due to a back issue. Second down and 16. As Manning escapes, another flag. And the pass is incomplete intended for Randall, and now a second flag is thrown downfield. So two penalty markers down, and we'll check in with Craig Rolstad. We saw the Saints, they had three sacks in the first half, cranking up that pass pressure again. There are two fouls on the play, both on the offense. An eligible man down the field, number 70, that penalty is declined, holding. Offense, number 74, that penalty is accepted, 10 yards, second down. Right guard, Jeff Schwartz. Yeah, working right there, getting, uh, getting really, really just kind of got ran over more than anything. Uh, went to the ground, but we were talking about one of these defenses stepping up to start to make some plays. This pressure by the Saints front, forcing back-to-back -back holding penalties. So the Saints take the result of the play. They decline both penalties. It'll be third down.
third and 16 for the Giants. I'd say this is normally difficult to convert, Kenny, but on an afternoon like today, probably about 50-50. White clock winding down. Catch is made by Will Ty. But not nearly enough, and the ball comes loose. Saints have recovered. It's Bird. First turnover of the game, and Jarris Bird, who was injured moments ago, comes up with the recovery. After being efficient all afternoon, this Giants offense runs into a sloppy session right there. They had the back-to-back -back holding penalties. Now the turnover. The fumble recovered by New Orleans, first and ten. That ball's out early. You can see it right there. All right. Tom Coughlin talked to us about gritty, scrappy. They've done that offensively, been able to bounce back. It's time for this defense to show some of those qualities right now. They, they've got to step out and help out their offense. First and 10, 36 yard line, and there's a nice defensive play made by Kerry Wynn, who wraps up C.J. Spiller for a loss of two. That's got to start with the guys up front. They, they've struggled to get to the quarterback all season long. They only had nine sacks coming into the game today. The second least, only behind Atlanta this year. And they, they've got to start doing something. They've got to shut down this run game. They've got to make Drew Brees uncomfortable in that pocket the way that they did to Eli Manning on that last series, the way the Saints did. Second down and 12 from the Giants, 38. Brees has Colston and Ingram switch spots. Play clock down to one. As Brees throws, and it's Watson. Who makes the catch with Kennard defending. There was a lot of change at the line of scrimmage for kind of a play call. This catch made by Watson, who's gone over 100 yards today on six receptions. It is now third down and eight. Interception in the last two games. So after the Giants turn it over, they get the ball right back. Well, last week against Indianapolis, Drew Brees made a couple of ill-advised throws. Once he got into the red zone, he does it again this afternoon. You're in complete control offensively today. No need to make that throw. Well, you said the Giants' defense must step up, and they did. Dominique Rogers, Cromarty. With the pick, there's John Cherry in at right guard for Jeff Schwartz, who suffered an ankle injury. Giants grabbing by seven, start at their seven as Manning hands it off to Jennings. And he gains four, and a penalty marker has been thrown. Holding offense, number 77. That penalty is half the distance to the goal, replay. That's John Jerry who just replaced Schwartz. Oh, there he is, right here. Is he on the inside of the framework? You know, say I don't. I don't know. I mean, if we're going to call that, we might as well just start calling everything because there wasn't a whole lot there. If your if your hands are on the inside framework of the body, I know we caught that play late, but I didn't see anything. First and 13 following the penalty is Jennings finds a hole. And Rashad Jennings takes it across the 20, out to the 22-yard line. So Jennings, with the Giants pinned deep, gains 18. All right, you need a spark. You need somebody to step up and make a play. And this is going to be a nice gain by Rashad Jennings. But then you see the effort and how much extra yardage he's able to generate on that run. That, that's going to get everybody going on this offense. That's the longest running play of the day on either side. From the 21, 
on first down. Manning can't find anyone. And now he throws it out of bounds. How about here? The last few possessions, we've had both of these defenses starting to step up and make some plays. We've actually seen some incomplete passes. It's amazing. Each team has run 44 plays. As we approach 700 yards of total offense. On the screen, it's Jennings. And Rashad Jennings picks up a Giants first down and more. Out to the 46. So Jennings gains 25 more. Uh, this is really well executed. Keep your eyes on Rashad Jennings. The good thing about this, we're only going to release one lineman out into the screen element. Weston Richburg is the only one. A lot of times when we're seeing the screens today, we've got multiple linemen. A lot of the defensive players see that happening, and they can adjust to it. Under six minutes to play, third quarter. Giants started this drive at their own seven. They're forced back on a penalty. Andre Williams tackled by Jonathan Jenkins after a gain of one. Four touchdown passes for Eli Manning, three to Odell Beckham Jr. Five TD throws by Drew Brees. Now Bobby Richardson running out onto the field. Saints got ten players in the defensive huddle. Manning with time. He fires. Getting in the way of it is Stephon Anthony, Ruben Randall, the intended receiver. Now we had two receivers in that same area, so Ruben Randall is going to be working from the left side, running that in route, and then we had an in route coming from the right side. You had to hold that, and all of a sudden you're right on top of each other, bringing all the defenders into the mix. Third down and ten. Bucks get to the 44 for a first down, and Vereen will not. It's Stephen Anthony who makes the tackle. Three yards shy of the marker. A uh, big difference we're seeing right now is the ability to get some pressure. This is Kasim El Edibale right there, getting that pressure from the outside, the speed rush, forcing Eli Manning up into the pocket and shortening his ability to let those plays develop down the field. So the Giants do not want to give the Saints a short field should they go for it on fourth down and not pick up the first. Wing, 61-yard punt and a 57-yarder earlier. Murphy lets it go, and this time the Giants did not keep it out of the end zone. course of the game you get limited opportunities with possessions and plays and you see how this game started for the Saints three plays just those four yards and then since then they're averaging nine yards a play since that opening drive Saints punted ten times last week and their win over the Colts they punted only once today as Breeze connects with Marcus Colston Colston out to the 26 for a gate of six the big thing the Giants defense has to do right now, they've got to start generating some type of pressure. It's the one thing that we've seen from the Saints defense that's kind of changed things a little bit here in the second half. Steve Spagnuolo, he's got to figure out something. If he's not getting there with his down four, he's going to have to start adding somebody. Take a risk that you may be overmatched in the secondary, but you've got to get Drew Brees out of his rhythm. On second and four, it's Ingram, and Mark Ingram picks up a first down, gain of nine. And we talked about Mark Ingram in the first half. He had his big runs in that second half against the Colts last week. So you got to beware of him right now because he is a big physical downhill runner. Talk about the Giants' pass rush as we mentioned earlier and we heard from Laura Oakman the return of Jason Pierre-Paul to practice this week. And the possibility that he will play next week for the Giants down in Tampa. 
Three is complete to Cooks. As we head to Los Angeles for a game break, Mike Hill, Mike. NFC South battle, Bucks and Falcons, and the rookie Jameis Winston starting to come into his own uh, botch play, but he decides to do it on his own. The two-yard touchdown right there. It's 20 to 10 Bucks in the fourth. All right, Mike. Winston and the Bucks. Giants opponent next week. Buccaneers have won only one of their last seven. In Atlanta, second and three. It's Ingram. Another first down out to the 47. Now you feel like you've got control of the game offensively. We'll see if they can kind of start to do some things to take some time off and limit the possessions that the Giants will have here down the stretch. It's, it's one of the things that Sean Payton talked to us about when he uses all these tight ends, not necessarily getting into four-minute style offenses, but being able to control the flow of the game, control the game itself at specific periods during this. So right here, late third quarter, let's get out there, let's pound the ball a little bit, take some time off that clock. It's all the time of possession. Saints have scored 35 points. And they've had the ball just over 16 minutes, and here's C.J. Spiller into Giants territory for another Saints first down. Well, we see C.J. Spiller get matched up on the outside in different formations as a passing threat. Here, watch him run. Watch him stretch this when he decides to get north and south. Cuts in backside of all that defensive pursuit for a nice run. Marcus Kuhn, 72, injured while making the tackle, so he heads off. Or Kerry Wynn, excuse me, he's replaced by Marcus Kuhn. I tell you what, when you put your offense in a position where you're... You're second and short. You're second and short the majority of the afternoon here with that production on first down. The Giants aren't bad either. Race to the outside. And the catch is made by Sneed. So Willie Sneed gains 11. Another Saints first down. They're 20. Sixth of the day. Yeah, it's funny. One of the one of the funnier things I've heard during our opportunity to be a broadcaster and you talk to people around the league is, is Peyton Manning, and he was always emphasizing why wait till third down to get a first down. Right. We're, we're trying to get first downs at every possible point during the course of the game. There's a first down on first down by the Saints. To your point, there have only been 12 third down plays the entire game. This is Ingram. Ingram works his way down to the Giants' 20-yard line. First down, number 27 for the Saints today. You just see the patience. He trusts his guys in front of him. Sometimes a runner becomes impatient, and he leaves his blocking. He does a really nice job of setting everything up. He'll kind of get in behind these guys, and you'll lose track of them, and allow the, uh, the offensive lineman to push down the field, and then he'll break out from behind that pack. Bottle minute, third quarter. Speed in motion from the Giants' 20. Play action. Brees moving to his right, escapes pressure. And the catch is made out of bounds. Josh Hill unable to get both feet down in bounds. Gonna have a running back in protection against Robert Ayers. Too athletic to go that low, but look at Drew Brees. Just a little sidestep there. Extends that play out. Josh Hill gets one down. Oh, looks like he might have got that down. John Payton has walked down there, but he's now reaching for the, the challenge in his back pocket. Second and ten. Breeze to the end zone. Watson, touchdown. Well, when your tight end has a big day, you're working against linebackers and safeties. We know about the injuries at the linebacker position. Ben Watson is just going to get vertical right down the middle of the field. A little stutter. He's on top of Devon Kennard right away. Safety help was up involved. That's an easy throw catch. So the New Orleans Saints, looking at what the roster situation is today, have really kind of decided what we like our matchup with Benjamin Watson against the linebackers and the safeties for the Giants. He's been a focal point in their passing attack today. Sixth touchdown pass for Drew Brees, tying a franchise record. The best football game in America this Thursday is on FS1. The second-ranked Baylor Bears take their high-powered offense 
against Kansas State. The only place to see all the action is Thursday night on FS1. This one certainly has the feel of a college game here in New Orleans. Absolutely. This is like the Big 12 right in front of us. I feel like we're in Waco. Six touchdown passes for Drew Brees. Ties the franchise record that he matched in 2009. Billy Kilmer. 16 deep throws for the Saints back in 69. So the Giants again trail by 14. Remember they erased a 14-point deficit pretty quickly for the late touchdown in the second quarter. And then Manning hitting Beckham early in the third. Now look at those numbers by Eli Manning. And let's not forget that last series for the Giants. They had a long pass down the field inside the 25-yard line of the New Orleans Saints. It was brought back. Then they had consecutive holding penalties. So th th this, this has been a nice performance by this Giants offense, too. But the Saints defensive line starting to assert itself here in the second half through that third quarter. From the 20 on first down. Manning to Beckham. And Odell Beckham Jr. is out across the 30, gain of 10. That was Beckham's seventh reception today. He has three touchdowns. Remember, John Jerry replaced Jeff Schwartz, who suffered an ankle injury earlier, and now Schwartz comes back in for Jerry. And right guard for the Giants. Time winding down, third quarter. First and ten from the 30-yard line. This is Jennings on the delay. As the third quarter comes to an end, Rashad Jennings picks up the 50th first down in today's game. 50 first downs in 45 minutes. Fourth quarter coming up. Through three quarters, 70 points. 50 first downs, 798 yards. Yeah, Tom Coughlin won his team to raise his level. Fourth quarter, that was a rallying cry early in the year. Rob Ryan, let's show your heart. This is the fourth quarter. Let's play with heart. The coaches on both sides sending their message. Getting to the 45. Still plenty of time to stick with everything that you've got at your disposal in your offensive playbook. They've really started to run the ball a little bit better here. Late third, four, uh, third quarter for the Giants. Manning on second and seven. There is a flag. Browder defending Randall, the intended receiver. Uh, the, the question is, where were his eyes? Was his helmet turned around? Looks like it's going against Brandon Browner again. Pass interference. Defense, number 39. The ball would place at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Browner's fourth penalty today. 15th on the season. Uh, he's lobbying his point right there. It looked like the route was shut down, and he stopped to play it, and then there was contact after it. So kind of a unique situation. I, I've agreed with a lot of the calls earlier today. It's just been a tough afternoon. We talked about the one thing that New Orleans was doing poorly early in the game was giving the Giants first downs via penalty. From the 37, it's Jennings. Giants over these last couple of drives have made a concerted effort to run the ball as Jennings takes it down to the 33 for a gain of four. Oh, you're just trying to take some time off this clock so Drew Brees and his offense are getting right back out on the field. This Giants defense hasn't been able to stop them. So, you know, the best defense for them going forward is going to be an offense that stays on the field a little bit more. Pass is short intended for Dwayne Harris. Eli Manning climbing up into the pocket. Kind of got crowded there at the end. Don't know if he was able to fully step and throw and deliver this pass as the pressure comes in. Again, there it is. It's, it's impacting the throw. It's not a sack, but it definitely had an impact on Eli Manning's throw to Dwayne Harris. Third down and six. Giants must get to the 27. Down goes Manning. Ball comes loose. Saints recover.
Looks like we got a penalty. Holding defense number 40. It's a five yard penalty. An automatic first down. Wow. A huge turn of events. I just talked about penalties resulting in a first down for the Giants caused by the Saints. This one gets a possession back for them. Bobby Richardson, number 78, is going to loop to the inside. He's going to come free, working against John Jerry. Balls lose, recovered by Tyler Davidson. First down, Saints, but no. Right there, working against Odell Beckham Jr. Delvin Bro flag. So instead of the Saints getting the ball back, new set of downs for the Giants after the Warriors 28. On the delay, it is Jennings. And Rashad Jennings gains four inside the 25-yard line. Haven't seen the play action, though. They've had success running the football here. You'd think Ben McAdoo would try to tie that in with a shot down the field with some play action. The Giants really struggling in their protection right here over the last quarter or so, keeping that Saints front out of the pocket. And they shuffle the right guard in and out, Schwartz and Jerry. Jerry remains in. There's Jennings out of the backfield. Stephon to Browner. And Rashad Jennings takes it inside the 20, just shy of a Giants first down. A couple of, couple of big guys out there right there. Brandon Browner, the, one of the more bigger physical corners in the, in the NFL. Rashad Jennings, let me tell you what, he's a beast. He's got a great stiff arm, one of the best stiff arms in the league today. Third down and one. There is a flag. I think Eli thought he had a free play in that situation. Yeah. It is against the Saints. Offside. Defense. Nose tackle. It's a five-yard penalty and a first down. For the Giants again for the second time on this possession. Got a first down via penalty. Working that hard count. You can see how hard that inflection is to get Tyler Davison to jump. So the Giants inching closer. First and ten from the Saints 14. Third penalty of this drive. Two have given the Giants the first down. One gave them the ball back. Right. There's Jennings. Jennings stays on his feet, finally down at the nine-yard line. Pick up a five. But getting some good productivity out of this run game. And, and again, it's keeping Drew Brees and all those weapons on the sideline, allowing his defense an opportunity to catch their breath. Kenny Vaccaro looks like the Saints player who's down in the field still. He's chomping at the bit to get back out there so long as he's been on the sideline all game today. Marcus Sanford replaces Macau, number 33. Sean Beckham. Darrell circled him in the slot. He has three touchdowns today. Check it down at five. Manny. Enzo. He was looking for Beckham. No flags. Bro on the coverage. It's been fun to watch all day. Delvin Bro. And here's a guy, and he comes in for a tryout with the Saints. And there's about seven, eight teams waiting to have their opportunity to try Delvin Bro out. And Rob Ryan calls up Sean Payton and says, all right, we can't let this guy leave the building. Now he, he had that good of a workout. Now the strategy paid off. They did not let him leave. The Carroll back in. Third down and five. Manning on third down, looking for Vereen. It's Vaccaro on the coverage. That's a nice job because Shane Vereen is excellent out of the backfield, running routes. He's a very difficult matchup 
for anybody in the passing game. You can see that little pivot change of direction. Great body control by Kenny Vaccaro. Now the field goal unit started to head out. Tom Coughlin down by 14. Leaves his offense on the field. Fourth down and five. Bannon on fourth down. Moving to his right. Directing traffic. Looking across the field. Now he throws. It's a touchdown. Quaid Harris. Giants for the second time today score a touchdown on fourth down. Oh my gosh, this is just a highlight reel of what you're not supposed to do as a quarterback. <laughs> I mean, you're rolling to your right and you throw back into the middle of the field. It's a missed time jump by a Saints defender. As he's coming down, the ball goes over his head right to Dwayne Harris. Right, you break contain. Okay, somebody work. He's waiting for somebody to work their way out to the right. He looks back. He has no options. It is fourth down. You know what? The heck with it. Let me just throw it up here and see if one of my guys can make a play. This is unbelievable. I mean, great job by the Saints defense. That's great coverage. They got everybody jammed. Look at the throw. But it's a heady play by Eli. It is fourth down. All right, so know what the scenario is in the game. What are you going to do, take a sack in that situation? Throw it up. Hopefully your guy makes a play. If they intercept it, they intercept it. It was fourth down. Damian Swan remains down. Swan making his return today. Missed the last two games due to a concussion. But Damian Swan is actually the player who leaps up, just missed times that jump and gets undercut by his own player and you can see all the way down and we talk about helmet to helmet we talk about these these knees to the helmet elbows to the helmet that are part of the game I tell you the one area that they're the concussions are still a big issue is helmet to ground helmet to ground these these players they elevate the the big bodies driving people into the ground it's it's still that area that uh, the NFL struggling with to get uh, to get some production in this concussion situation so the Saints medical staff tending to Damian Swan. Extra point when we return. Today's game is sponsored by Visa Checkout. The easier way to pay online. Sign up now. By Hyundai, an official sponsor of the NFL. And by Subway. Come in for National Sandwich Day, Tuesday, November 3rd. Wild one in New Orleans. Giants drive extended by a couple of Saints defensive penalties. They score on fourth down for the second time. Brown with the extra point. And the Giants following the Harris touchdown on fourth down have pulled to within seven once again. Eli Manning ties his career high with five touchdown passes today. Drew Brees has already tied his career best with six. Well, they kept him off the field for a little over three minutes, but here he comes. He's coming right back out, and he has had one heck of an afternoon here today and has taken advantage of injuries in the secondary and the linebacker level for the New York Giants. There's been some blown coverages. Marcus Colston uncovered in that situation. Easy touchdown. But the best thing that the Giants did on that last drive was you know, staying on the field a little bit longer than normal just to keep Drew Brees and these wide receivers off the field. The NFL record is seven. It's been set actually seven times. The last to do it, Nick Foles back in 2013. Eli's brother Peyton threw a 7-1 game that same year. Sixth time in history, Darrell. They combined 11 or more touchdown passes in one game. Kurt Medifee, I know you're keeping a close eye on all the action today here in New Orleans. What's going on? Yeah, we're just trying to keep count of all those touchdown passes. I don't think we'll see that many later on today in Dallas. Richard Sherman and that Seattle defense do their best to stop Des Bryant and the Cowboys. American's Game of the Week when you guys are done there in New Orleans. Des Bryant looks like he's back. He says he's playing. Kenny Moose Laura. All right, Kurt, we look forward to the Cowboys and the Seahawks, but still over 12 minutes remaining here <laughs> yeah. in New Orleans. Who, who 
knows how many more touchdowns we have left to go here. Reeves swings it out to Spiller. The ex saint Jonathan Casillas, the tackle. It just didn't it seem like that last drive was longer. It just it seemed like, hey, they did exactly what they needed. They kept Drew Brees on the sideline. Their defense has had an opportunity to catch their breath, and it's, what, three minutes and 14 seconds is all it was? Well, for today's game, that was pretty long. We've had 11 touchdown drives in this game. Each and every time, the Giants or Saints have driven 60 yards or more. There have not been a lot of short fields. No. Second down and four. On the reverse, it's Cooks. And Cooks is shoved out of bounds at the 23-yard line. That's a good play by Jay Bromley because he's the one that kind of makes Brandon Cooks run the bubble. He's going to come from your inside tackle position, recognize it, get up the field. Along with George Selvey, you get him strung out a little bit. It looked like it had some potential there when it started, but heady play by two defensive linemen. Jay Bromley out of your alma mater, Syracuse University. Third down and seven. A little bit prior to the snap. Ball start. Ball start. Offense. Number 72. Five yard penalty. Third down. We've talked about how productive everybody has been. Both offenses on first down here this afternoon, especially the Saints, up over eight yards a play on first down. It hasn't been many opportunities this afternoon where they've been in a third and long situation. They've pumped it only once today. Saints must get to the 30 for a first down. No flags. Sneed, the intended receiver. Rogers Crobati, the coverage. Now, I think that's a situation where Willie Sneed slipped and went to the ground. Dominic Rogers Cromartie has the opportunity to get to that point to make that interception. He's trying to get through there. I don't think he shoved him down to the ground. I think Willie Sneed actually slipped. Some tight coverage on the outside. And we finally got a stop by the Giants defense. And Morstead finally back out to punt. Saints went three and out on their opening drive of the game. And now Harris will let it bounce out of bounds. So the Giants, trailing by seven, scored a touchdown on fourth down on their last possession with an opportunity to tie the game. Highest scoring game in the NFL this season. We've had 11 touchdowns and no field goals last time that has happened. December of 08, Patriots and Raiders. Got some wacky things in the England Oakland games, right? Yeah. Not cool? <laughs> exactly. So now the Giants trailing by seven. Back to work from their 35-yard line. Off the play fake to Williams. Catch is made by Beckham. Odell Beckham Jr. Inside the New Orleans 40. And finally steps out of bounds. At the Saints 27-yard line, Beckham gains 38. And the, the thing about Odell Beckham Jr. is he's able to run routes, catch the ball on the move, regardless of where they are. He doesn't really lose a step or a stride. And Sean Payton told us he was, my biggest concern is his start-stop change of direction. Yeah, he's got flat-out breakaway speed, but that shiftiness is what worries us. What a homecoming for Manning and Beckham from the 27. It's Ruben Randall, the other Giants receiver from LSU. Now, this has been like a two-minute drill for 60 minutes today. I mean, the, the entire time we played, huh. it's, it's like... And we may need more than 60 minutes. <laughs> Second down and three from the Saints twice. Williams in the backfield, Harris in the slot. Second down, off the play fake, to the end zone, Harris pulls it in for a Giants touchdown for Dwayne Harris, his second of the fourth quarter. 
Uh, he said the big reason he came to the Giants in the offseason via free agency was because the Giants told him they were going to give him the opportunity to play more wide receiver than he had in Dallas. And I tell you what, uh, we saw him in Buffalo have a nice day. He's had a tremendous day here. Great release, little fake to the outside, gets him on top of Kyle Wilson. Nice throw by Eli Manning, great catch by Dwayne Harris. And remember, he's questionable with knee and ankle injuries here in the second half. Career best sixth touchdown pass for Eli Manning. Second today to Harris. What a game. Giants and Saints tied at 42. Today's game is sponsored by McDonald's, teaming up with the NFL like never before. Not sure we can find too many more words to describe this one. No, I'm all out. I'm all out of adjectives, Kenny. I mean, it's been, it's going to be a shame. You know, somebody's going to waste a great offensive performance here this afternoon. Um, you know, <laughs> some work to do next week as you break down your defensive film. But, boy, it, it, if you like offensive football, this has been fun. It's been great design, great strategy, play calling, and great play by our quarterbacks here. Six touchdown passes apiece. Manning setting a personal record. Breeze tying his career mark. We welcome those of you who have joined us following the Vikings win over the Bears. You see the score. Upper left-hand corner. And the time to go. <laughs> Still nine and a half left. It is correct. Giants and Saints tied at 42 as the catch is made out across the 40 by Brandon Cooks for a Saints first down. Now we, th this is a seven on seven drill fans that we're watching here today on television. It, these quarterbacks are on a roll and here's been one of the big things is the secondary the linebacker level for the Giants really been hit by injuries here and then we have we have J. Ron Hosley down. So that will even get thinner, and, and Drew Brees has made them pay all afternoon long. Thought we might see some run game from the Saints because of what the Dallas Cowboys did in the running game going over 230 yards, uh, but it has been all via the air. Drew, Drew Brees has done a great job of finding the open receivers matched up against linebackers, safeties. We welcome another new audience, Kenny Albert, Daryl Johnston, Laura Oakman here in New Orleans. 9-18 remaining as Giants quarterback Jaron Hosley is helped back onto his feet. New York Giants, for the second time today, have erased a 14-point deficit in under three minutes. Saints led 42-28 after three. Eli Manning with a pair of fourth-quarter touchdown passes to Dwayne Harris. Tying the game at 42. Six touchdown passes for both Manning and Breeze. The 12 touchdowns back on November 2nd, 69. An NFL record. Saints and St. Louis Cardinals. Tomorrow is the anniversary of that game. And that was the only other time in NFL history, Darrell, in which two quarterbacks both threw six. Billy Kilmer for the Saints, Charlie Johnson, for the Cardinals, six apiece for Breeze and Manning. They've matched each other drive for drive during the course of the afternoon. And you mentioned those the two comebacks by the Giants when they'd fallen behind by 14. Eli Manning uh, not, not worried at all, very composed down the field. It's been punch, counter punch all afternoon. Second down at two as Breeze throws and the pass is high. He was looking for the tight end, Watson, Jonathan Hankins with the pressure. And, and here in the second half, we finally started to get a little bit of pressure by both defenses. This, this time it's the Giants, Jonathan Hankins, 95, getting upfield, making Drew Brees move a little bit in the pocket. But both of these quarterbacks, their offensive lines have held up well the majority of the day. Third down and two. Breeze 
Doug at East. And it's a first down at the Giants' 47-yard line for Watson, his eighth catch of the day. That's a nice catch, too. Starting to slide to the outside, thrown on that back hip. Able to spin back and make the catch for the first down. So the Saints move the chains. Breeze is now thrown for 440 yards. He completed 18 straight passes earlier. They keep it on the ground on first down. It's Ingram to the Giants. 43 with under eight minutes remaining. Giants scored first. They led 7-0. We were tied at 7, 14, 28, and now 42. They've struck a little bit of balance here in the second half. We've seen Mark Ingram a little bit more involved in it. We've seen Rashad Jennings for the Giants also getting his, uh, his run game going a little bit. Over 900 yards of offense. Brees to the outside, it's picked off out of the flexion and taken back by Tremaine McBride for a Giants touchdown. It popped away from Willie Sneed right into the arms of McBride. Well, the, the hero of, one of the heroes of the Dallas victory, Dominique Rogers cromartie with the hit that causes the fumble. So again, we've talked about this, you know, that the yards were there, they haven't been able to slow them down, and you're waiting for that big play to happen, and it's Dominique Rogers cromartie again, jumping that, seeing that throw, coming off of his guy, putting the big hit down, jarring it loose. Tremaine McBride there for the deflection and the touchdown. It has rolled a completion, and then a fumble on the hit by Rogers cromartie McBride... It was on the Saints practice squad back in 2011. Takes it back all the way. And now flags on the extra point attempt. False start. False start. Offense, number 51. Five-yard penalty. Retry from the 20. Well, Darrell, you've alluded to the Giants' fourth quarter issues earlier in the season, blowing double-digit fourth-quarter leads in their first two games against the Cowboys and the Falcons. They have scored three touchdowns in the fourth quarter here today. Yeah, we came on talking about kind of a, the Giants' season being a, a series of little fires that popped up. They, they got rid of that fourth quarter one done. Uh, the passing offense as of late, they've got that taken care of today. So this is a team gritty, scrappy. They're just fine in a way this afternoon. Giants have their first lead since 7-0. Thirteen touchdowns, no field goals in today's game. First time since 65. There has not been a game with 14 touchdowns and no field goals, Darrell, since 1950. Well, we got seven minutes and 11 seconds left, so I think that's well within our reach right now, Kenny. Following the 60. Three-yard return by Jermaine McBride, his first NFL touchdown. Remember, the Saints led 42-28 after three. Now, this is all fourth quarter, and this is a team that had struggled in the fourth quarter early in the year. Dwayne Harris, first touchdown of the quarter, follows it up with a nice catch there for his second. And Dominique Rogers cromartie makes a great play. He is in coverage on the outside. He's got his back to the, he's got his eyes on the quarterback. He recognizes what's happening, comes off his guy, makes the big hit, jars it loose. Tremaine McBride with the deflection for the touchdown. All right, here we go. Saints back to work. Breeze under pressure, gets rid of it, and finds Ingram for a gain of three. As we hit seven minutes remaining here in New Orleans. And the Saints were over 150 yards in every quarter through the third quarter. Second down at seven. And that pass, tender for Colston, broken up by the end Saint Casillas. You know, big day in New York, Darrell, World Series tonight. New York Marathon earlier. This one feels like we've run a marathon. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine the emotional swings down below. Jonathan Casillas with a nice play right there in coverage on Marcus Colson. How about this? The last three possessions by the Saints have gone to third down. They, they were avoiding third down because they were so explosive on first down. Right. Very unusual. Third 
are down at seven. Saints must get to the 30. And Colston will not. What a tackle. Talk about all the issues the Giants have had today. Well, J. Ron Hosley comes up and makes a huge play, stopping Colston just shy of a first. And I tell you what, this is a really nice play because Marcus Colston is a big physical receiver. Watch the effort here as he tries to stretch out. Great camera work for our guys. Well done, J. Ron Hosley. Saints offense remains on the field on fourth down, and now Breeze will head over to the sidelines. Uh, the way these defenses have played today, it, it, to me, it, it, you don't even really think long and hard. you got six minutes left in this game. You know, you, you should be able to get an opportunity. I mean, both defenses have struggled, but if, if one was starting to get a resurgence before the other, I think the Saints defense has gotten the better of the Giants offense. You look at the other matchup, it's different, but this Saints defensive front has started to get some pressure and disrupt the Giants. I mean, if you are stuffed on this fourth down, yeah, it, it's going to be 56, 42 pretty quick. Breeze back out onto the field. Fourth and inches for the Saints with six minutes remaining. Well, fourth Sean, down, huge for the Giants today. They've scored a couple of touchdowns on fourth down. Yeah, and Sean Payton has been aggressive this afternoon uh, with some of his play calling, some of his style of coaching here this afternoon. So this is just kind of following suit, kind of following what he did last week in Indianapolis, the victory there. He's kind of followed that right back up. He's been a little bit more aggressive here this afternoon again. surge right here a lot of big bodies right in that interior part Devon Kennard almost there he was almost able to get in and submarine Mark Ingram before he got up over the top he set it down for the Saints with just over five minutes remaining they trail by seven Giants with three fourth quarter touchdowns the ball was never snapped Ball start, offense, number 64, five-yard penalty, still first down. That's the right tackle, Zach Streif, as we head for a game break with Mike Hill. Mike. Falcons was down 20-3 to against the Bucks. We're all the way back. Matt Ryan finding his guy, Julio Jones, back in the end zone. Eight-yard touchdown catch with 17 seconds left. we tied at 20, headed to overtime. Kenny moves back to you. Wow, shades of last week for the Tampa Bay Bucks. We blew a 24-point lead against the Redskins. Breeze for Cooks. What catch. Looked like it was about to bounce away, and Cooks able to hang on. Not only bounce away, but I think almost an opportunity for Wani Unga, 47, to make the interception. Game of seven, second and three. Another nice catch this time by Colston. And he works his way to the 43-yard line for a Saints first down. Four and a half to play. Breeze with six touchdown passes today, six for Eli Manning. Giants have taken the lead on a defensive score. Breeze fires downfield, and that pass is behind the intended receiver, C.J. Spiller. And that'll be something that they'll work on together. C.J. Spiller a running back out of the backfield, but that looked like Drew Breeze wanted him to kind of shut that one down, kind of that back shoulder look. If you're stride for stride down the sideline, what we're doing today is throwing that ball on that back shoulder and having the receiver make the adjustment for the catch. And that play reminiscent of the overtime touchdown reception by Spiller against Dallas. He went 80 yards. Second and 10. Breeze, a pump fake. Now he throws. 
near side. It's Willie Sneed. Closely the tackle. Ball will be spotted at the 47. Third down at six. Good job by Willie Sneed. That situation. He was the one that had the ball jarred loose by Dominique Rogers Camardi on that one. As soon as he gets the catch, he's got that security. He's not going to let that come out again. Another huge third down play for the Saints. Empty backfield. They must get to the Giants 47. And they do. It's a first down and more for Ben Watson. Who takes it all the way to the Giants 36 yard line, a gain of 15. Uh, tough to defend. It's that little stutter and go route. Watch as he comes over. He's going to stop right off the top of the quarterback. Little stutter go. There's your separation from Landon Collins. Montre Ward is the injured giant. Our support is proud to team up with the Movember Foundation and their commitment to changing the face of men's health. Join us at moteam.co slash fox dash sports to learn more about how we are getting involved in the Movember movement. First day of November, wild one in New Orleans. Giants with three fourth quarter touchdowns the battle back from a 14-point deficit and take the lead. But now the Saints are on the move. First and 10 from the Giants, 36. As Breeze throws and the catch is made by Sneed. Collins the tackle. And the Giants, 27, a gain of 9. Now they've just been great spacing throughout the afternoon when they get into these situations with the multiple wide receivers. Just It's so difficult for this Giants linebacker secondary group to get all their drops and get everything covered. Under three minutes remaining. This will be the 11th play of the drive for the Saints. And Breeze has gone over 500 yards passing. Now at 5.02, eight shy of his career best. This is Ingram. And he is wrapped up by Craig Dahl. Ingram close to a first down. This will be just short. Third down and one. Uh, this is a nice play by Craig Dahl because I thought Mark Ingram had right there that little jump cut to the outside, and there he is filling his gap. Clock winding down towards the two-minute warning. Here come the chains. Another opportunity for this Giants team. Third and short here again. A lot of third downs on this drive. We hadn't seen many third downs during the course of this game today. So we've gotten here on this drive. Now the clock runs down and we hit two minutes remaining. In New Orleans. With the Giants leading by seven. Third and inches coming up for Breeze and the Saints. What a game here in New Orleans. Six touchdown passes for both quarterbacks. Giants mount a huge fourth quarter comeback. Tremaine McBride with the go-ahead score. And now the Saints facing a third down and one. On the toss. It's a first down and one for Ingram. Who takes it all the way down to the Giants 11. Again, nice job by the Saints coming off that timeout and being ready to go they're in the huddle it's a pop to the line of scrimmage there's your big tight ends on the outside down down and around look at the running lane for mark ingram one who has a shot at him misses the tackle right there this is a tough physical runner you can see it as he finishes that down to a minute 25 on the clock new set of downs for the seats 
Here is Ingram, takes the handoff for Breeze as we welcome another new audience. Kenny Albert, Daryl Johnston, Laura Oakman. Here in New Orleans, Saints had a 42-28 lead after three quarters. Giants with three touchdowns in the fourth. For the second time in NFL history, two quarterbacks have thrown six touchdown passes in the same game, but the Saints need a touchdown to extend the game. Second down and eight from the Giants, nine. Breeze fires, touchdown! C.J. Spiller! And Drew Breeze ties an NFL record with his seventh touchdown pass today. That's been an area that they've really attacked with C.J. Spiller, with Benjamin Watson. Giants down in their linebacker level, and they've really exploited some of the matchups that they got. And C.J. Spiller, one of the more difficult guys to cover out of the backfield. Just not defended well. They, they never made him stop, change direction. He was able to just run a circle route right into the end zone. The extra point by Forbath. This game is tied for the fifth time today 49 apiece a lot of times this route is on a hard line and you, you force a linebacker to open his hips start and stop this one there's really not a whole lot going on it's just kind of looped out for the touchdown We welcome another audience tied at 49 with 36 seconds remaining in New Orleans. Again, you just watch C.J. Spiller. He's just going to come out and nobody really changes direction. Both of these linebackers, they don't really play it all that well. You know, it, it's I've seen him run before. I mean, you got to squeeze that right now. You know the situation. And Jonathan Casillas lets C.J. Spiller get up on him too much. And, and that was easy. That was way too easy in that situation. With that one completion, Drew Brees sets new Saints franchise records for completions, yards, and touchdown passes in one game. And let's not forget about that gutty fourth down call by Sean Payton early in that drive. I would have punted that way and hoped my defense could make a stop. I think Sean was, the way this game has gone, I, don't, I think he just didn't have the confidence that they'd be able to stop Eli. 98 points, eighth highest all time, over 1,000 total yards. Giants and Saints have set an NFL record with 13 touchdown passes combined in one game. They've tied an NFL record with 64 combined first downs. Remember what we said at halftime? Last team with the ball wins. Looks like we're heading that way, Kenny. So with 36 seconds remaining, Eli Manning and the Giants offense back out. So Eli has thrown six touchdown passes, but the quarterback on the other side has thrown seven. Now, the Saints defensive front has been starting to get pressure, speed rushers from the outside. The other big thing this afternoon, penalties. Penalties by the Saints defense. Critical times for first downs for the Giants. 36 seconds, three timeouts from the 20. of Randall. I tell you what, that's not what you expect to see on the first play of a series with 36 seconds left. He gets on top of coverage right here. He's on top of Keenan Lewis. Oh, you gotta, man, you got to make a play. A little contact there by Keenan Lewis on the left arm. Batting on second and ten. Over the top. And a nice tackle made after the gate of five by Shane Vereen. Harris Bird brings him down. Third and five. Coming up. 25 seconds remaining. What a day. It's been unbelievable. I mean, every time we thought that the defenses were finally going to start to make a play, these offenses just continue to uplift their execution. It's been fantastic. It's been fast-paced. We talked about it. It's been like a two-minute drill since we kicked off here. 
uh, you know, they would separate. The Saints would go up 14. Giants would come right back. Aggressive play calling. Great athleticism on the field. On the field, and obviously tremendous quarterback play all afternoon. Third down and five. Manning fires on third down. And the Giants with 20 seconds will send out the punting unit. Wayne Harris coming out of the slot has had a big fourth quarter, an opportunity for a play there. Kyle Wilson gets him off the line. Little shove there, gets him into the wrong area. <laughs> Rob Bryant's defense finally with a stop there. We've given up 49 and we have a chance to win the game. Well, we've heard a lot about Marcus Murphy while we've been down here. Does he have an opportunity to catch this thing? They talked about his north-south style of returning. Second charge timeout, New York Giants. This is a 30-second timeout. The other thing is, it, you know, Brad Wing has been phenomenal on his punts today. I mean, he just, he's been driving the ball. Murphy waiting at his 30. Murphy moving to his left from the 29. And Murphy is across midfield. Ball comes loose into the hands of Willie Sneed. There is a flag. Five seconds on the clock. We will check in with the referee, Craig Rolstad. By Willie Sneed has the fumble earlier in the game that results in the 49-42 lead by the Giants and he's there to bail out his buddy Marcus Murphy. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by New Orleans. First down and 10 New Orleans. There's no penalty on the play. First and 10. All right, the flag has been picked up. Five seconds on the clock. Following the return by Murphy, a fumble, ball stripped out by Craig Dahl, who was injured on the play, and Great. then Steed able to recover for the Saints. And Steed advanced it a couple of yards. Wow. After Rolston initially said no flag, Face mask against the Giants. The field goal unit has started to come out for New Orleans with five seconds remaining. Let's see on Brad Wing. Yeah, he's got the punter has the face mask, but now he's going back to that punt situation. Brad Wing has driven the ball both times. He did that Aussie style kick on that one that allowed it to be returnable. He's been driving the ball 60 yards down the field earlier in the game. I don't know why they chose to punt that way. Marcus Murphy made him pay. So here's Kai Forbath, first field goal attempt of the day on either side. His career long is 50. This will be a 51-yard attempt following the long return and the face mask call on the Giants punter, Brad Wing. Oh, this is only fitting for the end of the game, the way this game has been played all day. 14 touchdowns, no field goals, and as the officials continue to discuss things, we'll bring in Mike Pereira from Los Angeles. Mike. 
You know, what they're really trying to figure out, what you have here is you have a fumble inside of two minutes, which means that you have to go back to the spot of the fumble and put the ball back there since it was not recovered by the fumbling player. Now, the face mask still gets enforced, but it looks to me like it should be from somewhere about the 47-yard line, 48-yard line, and the 15 packed on from there. So I think that's probably what they're talking about at this point. Ball has been marked at the 32, so that goes along with what Mike was saying. 47 and attack on 15. From the spot of the fumble as the ball was fumbled forward. There can be no advance once the ball is fumbled forward, so New Orleans fumbled at the 47-yard line. The penalty is tacked on 15 yards from that spot. It'll be first down and 10, New Orleans at the 32. Five seconds. So that's exactly what Mike Pereira told us. It'll be a 50-yard attempt. Kai Forbath in his third game with the Saints. 50 is his career long as a member of the Redskins. And now the Giants will use their final timeout. 30-second timeout. Fourteen touchdowns in the game, and it will come down to a field goal attempt after the Giants got the ball back. Saints scored with 36 seconds remaining. Giants go three and out. Punt. Big return. Penalty. America's game of the week. Cowboys and Seahawks next. I'm not sure how they can top this. <laughs> I don't think they can. This will be from the right hash. Luke McCown is the holder. Five seconds remaining in regulation. Tied at 49. The 50-yard attempt by Forbath is good. This is Kenny saying so long. America's Game of the Week is next.